Ah, uh, the arch villain, the BBEG, a reliable trope in many of our games to serve as the figurehead of whatever troubles are plaguing the land. With classic lines such as Only now, at the last moments of your life, do you understand the truth that I am your master. And There are none on this world who appreciate my majesty. Only the great legends of the past could appreciate what I have become, and that I have surpassed them all. The villain is there to give exposition, provide a challenge, and point the players in the direction of the plot you wrote. But inevitably the villain will find themselves toe to toe with the players, and this is where most villains will fall. Over the years, the game has become more and more player-centric, with stuns, reactions, readies, and spells designed specifically to make sure a player can go, well actually, if the BBEG attempts to flee, teleport, plane shift, or any of the normal ways to escape a scene. If only there were some other ways for the villain to escape, to really live up to the elusive recurring title. Fortunately, there exists a compendium of items that can be used to ensure that the villain can get away. My name is Red No Blue, and this week's video is about the various magical items that allow the villain to escape from A to B. To begin with, we need to categorize the various items that the BBEG could have at their disposal. Many of these items could conceivably be with the BBEG because, as the plot's main protagonist, their resources are probably quite high, they have a great many followers to gift them things, and the mysterious patron they usually follow can give them a token of their immeasurable power. Whereas players have to work from the ground up, the villain gets a boost at the low low price of probably not surviving past the end of the campaign. Please note, while some of the items work best with spells, the focus is on the items available in the DMG. Thus, I'll note spells such as Clone and Magic Jar here, but they're not the focus. Similarly, I'm going to ignore magical items such as the Lich's Phylactery, as it's not the scope of the Dungeon Master's Guide. If you want to learn more about turning your villain into a Lich, go watch AJ's video on the subject. It's really good. The first group is weapons. They're not so much a way to help you escape as they are a way to ensure you leave no survivors. Having a flame brand sword or even the Sword of Kaz may be intimidating, especially if the party only has bare fists and sticks, but those are also the weapons of monks, and that means the stuns aren't too far behind. The most useful item in the weapons category is the Retributive Staff, which, as an action, allows you to take 20 charges, because you don't use it ever, and deal 160 damage to all creatures within 10 feet of you. There is a 50% chance that you will avoid the damage and instead be teleported to a random plane of existence. If you have the spells needed to survive the next plane, the villain can cast Augury ahead of the battle and know beforehand if breaking the staff would be a good idea or kill them. It allows you to roll the results secretly and make decisions from there on if you break the staff or use another option. We'll touch briefly upon spell scrolls and potions. Spell scrolls let you cast spells that are on your spell list, but maybe you didn't prepare for the day and it lets you cast at higher levels than normal if you succeed at an ability check. But if you're a warlock, you can't cast Word of Recall like a cleric, and any spell cast is still susceptible to counterspell, and ever since a certain critically acclaimed stream, that spell has risen in popularity. But if you're tapped out of spells, or if the players know you're a hardcore necromancer, pulling out a gate spell or similar can be a huge surprise. Potions are useful spells that you concentrate on with your stomach instead of your brain. They let you use the same sort of spells as noted in my other video of A to B spells, and the most useful for escaping are Spider Climb, Fly, Gaseous Form, and Speed. The other would be the Potion of Longevity, but this is only useful if you're really playing the long game. We all know the best escape is definitely outliving the PCs. We should also get the various items that promote alternate movement out of the way. Cape of the Mountaback, Slippers of Spider Climb, the various tools that give you augmented movement or teleportation are simple and effective, but ultimately everyone knows how to use them. 
The most interesting of the items in this category, in my opinion, is the Ring of Elemental Command, which allows you to move in earth, rocks and rubble as if it were normal terrain. Choosing the location of your fight with the PCs is one of the few advantages you have as the villain, and being able to dash through treacherous rocks is a great way to outpace the PCs. Unless they can fly. The items that let you control and summon different creatures is the item version of the piggyback spell. Figurines of wondrous power allow you to summon a creature of nightmare, such as the ivory goat that causes fear in anyone trying to attack you. And that's nothing compared to the nightmare fuel of seeing a giant fly proboscis and shiny onyx. The filter of love can be good with honorable foes who will drink a final toast with you before you die. And the items that summon powerful allies usually make them okay with carrying you in their non-human standard arms. We should discuss the items that give you invisibility really quickly. Invisibility means that players have disadvantage to hit you, and you need to be able to see a creature to be able to counterspell them. Items that allow you to be seen require an action to use for the most part. It's a pretty good way to escape, as long as your method of egress isn't just running away. Visible or not, that's not an effective way of escaping. Finally, we have the special cases. These require special conditions to work and can be used in conjunction with other spells for the best chance of success and are guaranteed to be the methods of escape the players can't possibly plan for. The first is what I call gravity assisted escape. The spells and items that allow you to fly or fall without taking damage always are on the side of safety and the safe speed is usually capped at 60 foot per round. Other people have worked out that falling speed is around 30 feet per second, or 180 feet per round. There are items that make you immune to falling damage, but players can cast Featherfall on you as it targets creatures rather than allies, and there is no save, meaning that you would then just fall uselessly because they'd be able to quickly catch up. Instead, go for the bead of force. Smash it in your hand as you step back and take a bit of damage, but then freefall three times faster than anyone trying to follow you, and be untargetable by spells, attacks, and effects. The bead of force will make you immune to the falling damage. The second is the wording on the saddle of the Cavalier. While horseshoes of speed and the Zephyr specifically require horses, the saddle of the Cavalier requires a mount. You're unable to be dismounted while in it, and attacks against the mount have disadvantage. Add a potion of invulnerability to make sure you survive the initial fireball or whatever they throw at you, and use the pick of monster summoning. Jin, Ifrit, Elemental, whatever you want can be a mount, and being in that saddle gives you a great chance of escape while ensuring you can take out as many of the PCs as possible. Next is the perennial favorite. Place a portable hole into a bag of holding. A gate on the Astral Sea will open and any creature will be sucked through and deposited into a random location. This can be devastating for individuals that cannot plane shift, and it doesn't say that you all go to the same location. From there, take out your scroll of plane shift or gate, or use your knowledge of planar conjunctions or conduits to head back to your home plane uncontested. Knowles' Marvelous Pigments allows you to paint non-magical objects, which can include parachutes, gliders, or wingsuits. It takes 10 minutes to paint an object, but that doesn't say anywhere that you can't interrupt the painting, only that the object forms once you complete it. So you could time the painting so that you have a single action left to complete it. Take out the brush when this fight starts going badly, dab in the more traditional sense, and then fly away using the object you've finished. Alternatively, create a pit on the floor. PCs rush in and they'll see a mostly completed black painted square on the ground. They'll probably not think anything of it until the moment they're hurtling down 100 feet. The Sphere of Annihilation is a powerful item, and it is really bad if you have to rely upon it to escape. But here's a way to do so. The Sphere has a 2 foot diameter, and can be controlled if you have the Talisman of the Sphere to give you double proficiency in the Contest of Wills. Now ensure that you have the Armor of Invulnerability, the Reduce Potion in a Tooth Cap, some way to fly, and a Necklace of Adaptation. Activate the Armor of Invulnerability and shout your line, YOU'LL NEVER TAKE ME ALIVE! Bite into the Potion Tooth Capsule and look for all intents and purposes as though you just got annihilated by the Sphere by walking into it. Then, just keep flying within the Sphere. 
The armor keeps you alive, the necklace lets you breathe, and the talisman lets you fly towards the party still inside the Sphere of Annihilation. Chances are good they'll run from the sphere, giving you the opportunity to collect yourself and escape. The next option relies a bit on the physics. The decanter of endless water can create a geyser that can push people over unless they succeed on a low strength check. It can move objects up to 200 pounds. The decanter can do this per round and use as a command word. There's nothing to say that more than one bottle can use the same keyword, and each bottle gives about 150 newtons of force. A water jetpack gives 1,900 newtons of lift, which means that a minimum 13 decanters would allow you to fly away at speed from the PCs. Assuming no anti-magic field, this would be an effective way of escaping as a dispel magic would affect only one decanter at a time. Quick shout out to any item that lets you cast a wish, as that's an obvious penultimate option, and we're good. But now for the most foolproof and OP item in the A to B villainy arsenal. While holding this rod, you can use an action to activate it. The rod then instantly transports you and up to 199 other willing creatures you can see to a paradise that exists in the extraplanar space. For each hour spent in the paradise, a visitor regains hit points as if it had spent one hit die. Also, creatures don't age while in the paradise, although time passes normally. Visitors can remain in the paradise for up to 200 days, divided by the number of creatures present. When the time runs out or you use an action to end it, all visitors reappear in the location they occupied when you activated the rod or an unoccupied space nearest that location. The rod can't be used again until 10 days have passed. The Rod of Security allows you to rest up and recharge abilities to let you get away immediately upon returning back. It can give you up to 200 days, and it's your choice when you return. It also says that time passes normally while you're inside that paradise, and so the 10 days passing can pass during the time that you're in the paradise, and so you could use it immediately if things go awry. Sure, the party can also rest up, but then it's their choice to stay there for 200 days. All it takes is another emergency elsewhere, perhaps by hired monsters, and you're home free. Another interesting thing that you could do, as the DM, is tell the players that this person is teleporting away, and would they like to follow? If they do, fantastic, because now they are in a paradise that is up to your control, and they've essentially said, yes, we will become the sims in whichever house you want to create for them, and hey, a lot of paradises are just four walls and surrounding a very small room with no bathroom, or perhaps a gigantic pool where you've deleted the ladder and they have to continue swimming until they die. It is cruel. And cruelty to some people can be paradise. In summary, there are a great many ways for the DMG to help you move from A to B, but a great many ways for the players to stymie that movement before one letter turns into another. But with a little luck and a lot of ingenuity, we can all make sure that our villains escape in order to further destroy the worlds that we've so painstakingly created. Thank you very much for listening to this Red No Blue video. I hope you've learned something. I hope that it's been fun. I also hope, apparently, that you will like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, any corrections, any comments, you're welcome to leave them below.